Hello everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. I make motherhood lifestyle and DIY videos over here every Wednesday. So if that's the type of thing you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I guess let's just jump right into it. <laughs> So what we're making today is actually this really cute little bonnet. This one here is going to be for my baby girl. Um, I love linen, so I typically choose linen fabrics for bonnets and things because, I don't know, I like the style. I think it's really cute. This is actually technically not a baby bonnet. A lot of people sell these on Etsy and lots of people make them, um, but this in particular is actually called a coif, which is from the medieval era, I suppose. It's something a lot of women and children used to use just to cover their hair and their heads. I think it's kind of funny that that style came back, but a lot of people asked me to make them these in particular. So I have quite a few patterns for them. I think I have somewhere like eight different variations of a similar pattern like this. I did actually draft three different sizes or three different age groups for these hats. So if you want to find a size that will fit your little one or someone you want to gift to, just look in the description box down below. I linked a pattern for zero to three months, which is this one, so a newborn size. And then also um, three to six months and six to 12 months. So basically it'll fit any baby that you know or have. Right here I'm just um, picking some fabric. So you can see I've got quite the collection going. Um, I tend to order most of my fabric from a store called Tiny Stitch in Warman, Saskatchewan. It's local. I really like the quality of the fabric and everything and I tend to really like their linen that they stock. Um, but the fabrics I'm choosing here all have a common like brown tone. So I really like that they all kind of go together nicely and I like the sort of um, like earthy vibe that they have. Okay, so here's just a little spread of all the stuff you're going to need for this. Um, yeah, fabric, measuring tape, pattern pieces, fabric scissors of course, needle and thread, and you know, mango snacks if you're so inclined, which I definitely am. So for me, the first step of any sewing project is just ironing out whatever fabric I'm gonna use, especially if you're working with linen and cotton, they tend to be very wrinkly. So um, I always pre-wash my fabrics, um, which actually causes them to fray a little bit and then you do get all that texture back. So I always pre-iron everything and then get started from there. So right here I'm just laying out my fabric and everything, trying to see um, placement and everything for pattern pieces. Um, with the pattern that I included, I have something called a grain line drawn across it. So if you're not familiar with what that is, or like cutting out patterns in general, I'll link down below in the description box a little bit of like a tutorial, I guess, or a summary on the types of information you're gonna need and everything for pattern, cutting, like cutting out patterns. <laughs> um, this is something I've been doing for years so it's second nature to me for the most part um, but yeah for beginners sewers and everything I'll link that down below So what I'm using here is actually a self-healing cutting mat, uh, my quilting ruler, and a rotary cutter. So I actually got these things for Christmas from my father-in-law a couple years ago, which 
I mean, my mother-in-law helped him out a little bit, I think. Um, I do a lot of quilting, so these are sort of like quilting tools, um, but they're excellent for cutting straight lines. So here I'm just cutting out the, um, sort of like a binding, um, but it's gonna be the trim on the bonnet. So what you're gonna need to do is cut out strips of fabric. They can be kind of any length that you want, depending on how long you want the straps to be. Um, for me, I just used a piece of scrap fabric and cut them out, but they are 1.5 inches wide. So now it's time to thread your machine. So here I am just reloading my bobbin and I decided to choose a, like a thread that matches really well with some of the tones in the fabric. So for this one, I didn't choose like a white or something. Um, that would sort of tie in better with the trim. Um, I decided to choose brown just because that's the overarching tone that I went with with the rest of the fabric. So now we get to the fun part, pinning. <laughs> I actually ended up using um, my sewing clips, which I actually prefer over pins because you don't get stabbed nearly quite as often. Um, but yeah, you just want to pin right sides together the long rectangle and like along the curve of the cap um, and then you can start on either side whatever your preference is um, yeah and then just sew along that with a quarter inch seam allowance so this is what it should look like um, once you're done sewing that with that quarter inch seam allowance. And then you're just gonna wanna repeat that for the other side as well. So once you're done with the next side here, you're gonna wanna set that part aside and do the exact same thing with the lining fabric. So once you're done the lining fabric, you're going to want to pin the two caps wrong sides together. So once you're done pinning, what you're going to want to do is actually set your stitch length to the longest stitch length, which on my machine I set it to 4 rather than 2.5. And then we're going to do what's called a basting stitch across the entire perimeter or along the entire perimeter. Um, and then that'll just help keep the two layers together when we put the Okay, now for the binding, or the trim, I guess. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take two of those pieces and sew them together on one end, right sides together, obviously. And then we want to flatten out that seam we just did, and then fold the entire thing in half the length way, like the long way. So once you're done ironing that, what we're gonna do is then flip in the sides. So you wanna flip in the raw edges toward the middle, like the middle crease that you created. So what we're creating here is kind of like a quilt binding, but it's like a trim for the entire cap. And this long piece will actually also create the ties. So the first step is we're going to pin the smaller piece along the bottom or the curved edge of the cap. So you just want to start on one side, pin it right sides together all along the edge. And then we're going to attach it with that quarter inch seam allowance again. So we're just going to sew that guy all the way down. And yeah, right here we're sewing with that 2.5 or regular stitch length as well. So here you'll just see me trimming off the excess. Okay, so here's where things start to come together. So we're folding over that edge once and then again so that it covers up the raw edges. So this is a binding. 
Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is pin that and then we're going to sew along with just over a quarter inch seam allowance so that you get really close to the folded edge. Um, that way you're sort of keeping the stitches out of the way, but also it creates a really nice um, finished edge. So when we're looking at the hat, you can see those um, longer stitches. So you can actually stitch rip those once we're done putting on the binding and it'll actually make your finished project look a lot better. Okay, so there's a bit of a trick here. So what you wanna do is line up that seam that we did on the binding right in the center top of the hat. So that'll make sure that the um, straps are the same length on either side. So yeah, just pin that the same way we did before. So for the end of the straps here, just to clean up the edges, I'm just folding the very bottom in about a quarter inch and then folding it up the same way that we ironed it. So you can see right here that it finishes up the edge really nicely. So when we sew all the way down, it should close up that edge. Okay, so now we're just gonna sew along that with our quarter inch seam allowance and on our 2.5 or regular stitch length. Okay, so once we're done sewing that, we flip it over the same way we did before, fold it over once and then again, and then we're gonna pin along the entirety of that. And we're also going to fold over the straps on themselves, sort of. So you can just see how I'm doing that here. So just folding those two raw edges towards the middle, kind of like how we ironed it, and then just clipping or pinning all the way down that. And then yeah, you, as you sew that top stitch, you just sew all the way down the straps as well. So once you're done sewing along the straps, all I do is just sort of do a couple little stitches along the bottom so that they stay nice and finished. Um, just show you right here. So once you're done that, you just turn it and do a couple of extra stitches along the bottom. And after all that hard work, Here's this beautiful little baby bonnet, or coif, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so if you liked this video, definitely give it a like. Leave a comment down below and tell me what kind of fabrics you like to sew with the most. Or if you're a beginner sewer, what kind of things you'd really like to start sewing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Definitely subscribe and like and share and do all that lovely stuff. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.